Uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, first of all, let me wish you all all the best for all those appearing for the speciality exam on the 8th of June this year. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, today we have with us again, Dr. Rana uh, Sadiki, who is an ST5 working in the uh, Royal Gwent Hospital in Newport, United Kingdom. He has already presented to us uh, two excellent sessions of uh, high yield topics and question and answers uh, and cleared many of our concepts and themes. And here he is here today presenting the part three. Okay, fine. Thank you so much, Dr. Dalby. Uh, I'll try to share my screen first. All right, so uh, this is the third video we've done two already. So most of the things will be the continuation which we have already discussed previously. So index of this video is quite short one. We'll first go through some important syndromes which can be asked in the exam or which can come in the A, B, C, D, E answer options very frequently. So you'll need to know about them a bit more. And then we'll also go through some important topics uh, we will not be able to cover all those important topics, but we'll just touch base with few of those important topics. And at the end, there will be one or two question papers, one which will be from these videos, which we have already done, and one question of 10 questions where you can just do some self-assessment exercise. So this is the first slide today, uh, important syndromes. These are important syndromes one should be very well aware uh, aware of for the exam point of view. So number one is Carney complex, Carney's disease there. So this is autosomal dominant. So we already discussed about these inheritance patterns for many of these diseases in our video one and two. And we've also discussed about so many mutations. So let's talk about the clinical features of this disease. So this is autosomal dominant in inheritance pattern. It can have cutaneous manifestations, cardiac myxoma, and it can have Cushing's syndrome, which is primary pigmented nodular adrenal disease. So which means it is primarily adrenal disease, not coming from pituitary. It can have inactivating mutation of PRKAR1A gene, and then it can have that sertilized cell tumor and thyroid adenoma. So these are important features of Carney complex and they can always come in exam. So just be aware of these features. Number two important syndrome is McCuney Albright syndrome. This is, this is also very important because it involves so many important endocrine glands. So it is somatic mosaicism for GSP mutation, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. We have previously discussed in the videos that polyostotic fibrous dysplasia of McCuney Albright syndrome can be treated with bisphosphonates when we were discussing about the treatment with bisphosphonates. Another feature is precocious puberty, cafe all our sports, ACDH independent Cushing's gene as one gene activating mutation and thyroid nodule. So in a, another important point to note here will be that gene as one gene mutation it can be activating or inactivating. So this is where exam question can be a bit confusing. So activating mutation would be McCuney Albright syndrome. And if it is inactivating mutation, it will be pseudo hypoparathyroidism. So it's an important distinguish to be aware of. Third important syndrome will be von Hippel-Lindau disease. So again, it is autosomal dominant. It can have CNS hemangioblastoma retinal angiomas, renal cysts, or carcinoma, which is the most common cause of death in these patients, endolymphatic sac tumor, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, or pheochromocytoma. So we have briefly discussed VHL when we were discussing about pheochromocytoma. So there are some genetic diseases which can involve pheochromocytoma. One of them is von hippel lindau disease. An important point here will be that renal carcinoma can cause death. Next important syndrome is Turner syndrome. Very important exam favorite question. There were so many questions in the last exam from Turner syndrome. They can ask so many different aspects of this disease. 
So it has got genotype of X naught and it presents as primary ovarian insufficiency. Amongst the heart problem, it can cause aortic coarctation. That's why surveillance is done with the three to five yearly echo. It can manifest as osteoporosis. So bone density needs to be checked very frequently. Again, three to five yearly. Hypothyroidism, so TFTs needs to be checked. Renal, ENT, and karyotype. These are a few other important things to be aware. Karyotype is X0, which we have discussed about. So follow-up surveillance, they frequently ask. Annual, we'll check BM, BP, TFTs, lipids, fasting blood glucose, and liver function tests. Three to five yearly echo, bone density, and hearing test. And the important aspect of Turner syndrome would be, when will you go for gonadectomy? So if the genotype shows XY, that is where you will need to go for gonadectomy. So easy way to remember is that if female Turner is having XY, which is resembling male genotype, it is more dangerous. You need to go for gonadectomy. Another way to remember is if someone is having Kleinfelter syndrome, but having genotype resembling female, having XX, then they have got mixed gonadal dysgenesis. And again, they will need to go for gonadectomy. So these are indications of gonadectomy in Turner. And so the free view of this particular lecture has ended. Uh, for access to this full lecture session, please subscribe to my lecture series, which is total of 60 lectures till date. Uh, these uh, will be provided access to via a paid subscription plan and uh, all the paid subscribers will be given a lifetime access to all my existing 60 videos lectures which are already on the YouTube channel plus all the upcoming new videos. So whatever lectures or sessions I'll be doing in coming weeks, months and years, all of them will be uh, given access to in the same subscription plan. So for the full subscription details, please email me on mazirules at gmail.com or WhatsApp me on 00971557434794 and have the same number on the Telegram app as well. Uh, just to give a brief overview of the full lecture series. So it includes uh, different topics across diabetes and endocrinology. For diabetes itself, is there are around 19 lectures which I've done across different topics which are useful for the exams as well as for the clinical endocrinology practice. In terms of uh, high yield topics for specialty exam and European board exam, there are around nine sessions which have covered all the previous exam recalls as well as all the high yield topics and themes which are frequently encountered in the uh, specialty exams and the European board exams. In terms of thyroid, apart from the thyroid cancer guidelines which were recently uh, published, plus there are other sessions on different topics uh, related to thyroid uh, across the spectrum of thyroid disease. In terms of adrenal as well, covering all the important topics or sessions which are frequently encountered in exams and in clinical practice. There are two very good sessions on lab endocrinology by Dr. Well Murugan, very helpful for those preparing for uh, DM endo or DNB endocrinology as well. In terms of pituitary also have covered all the important sessions on all the important topics which are frequently encountered in clinical practice and the exams. There are a few sessions on the inherited endocrine syndromes as well. Very important sessions on reproductive endocrinology about uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, gynecomastia, hirsutism, PCOS, diagnosis, evaluation, management. There is a uh, sessions on calcium and bone metabolism on familial lipid disorders and uh, sessions on pediatric endocrinology as well. So just to let you know that there are many more sessions coming up. And as I mentioned, that in the same subscription plan or same subscription fee, you will be provided access to all my existing 60 lectures plus all my forthcoming lectures. So thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for supporting me.